my goodness! Yeah! Yeah! Holy yeah! sh! folks welcome back to another episode uh, if you're a regular viewer of this and I thank the 17 that are out there but uh, you know I'm a Ford guy so what the hell am I doing with a Chevy square body well uh, if you remember from a year ago I dug out a 78 f-150 from out of the frozen ground and got it running and me and Aaron here drove it to a swap meet down to Cape Girardeau Missouri and we picked up a 1965 Mercury Comet uh, the plan for the other Comet that was down there that I also bought, we were going to go back later in the summer, get it running, and try to drive it home. Well, that didn't happen, obviously, for uh, time and money constraints. So we're going to use this here Chevy to go back this winter and try it again. Seems how the Ford worked out so great. We'll see if the Chevy can hold a candle to it. Now, the truck isn't mine. It's actually Aaron's. He had it given to him, which I'm kind of dis disappointed that you didn't find a way to make the guy pay you to take it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's uh, take a look at the uh, candidate here and see what we're talking about as you see it has a nice mossy cover all over it it's a uh, we figure based on the license plate it hasn't been uh, on the road in 19 years uh, I believe you told me the guy you got it from it was his grandfather's truck it was his uh, dad's truck. His dad's. Yep. And the only reason it was parked, from what we've been told, is he just got too old to be driving it. So it should have been in pretty good mechanical condition when it was parked. Should have been. Should have been. It's in surprisingly good shape. And there is some rust, but it's not a total rot box. It's a 74? 74. Isn't that, that the second year of the square body? Yep. Got a... What do we think? A 350 in it probably? 350, probably a turbo 350 automatic, 203 chain drive transfer case. Uh, <laughs> we might be changing that out. I don't know what the hell they were thinking back in the 70s with these full-time four-wheel drives. Not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get you a closer look at it. Very mossy. Aaron here, he's really eager to pressure wash this. He wants to see what it looks like all cleaned up. I think, it, yeah, it should be a pretty sharp truck. That blue and white paint scheme you kind of get an idea what the paint might look like because the the tailgate was down on it the whole time it sat so there there's a little bit of clean paint there thankfully it already has a hitch on it so we won't have to do that it's going to need tires obviously we're going to do something about tires just to get it off the trailer our objective today is just to get it running and driving and then we'll come up with a plan for the rest of it. Slightly more cancer in this area. Yeah. That's just part of Iowa and it's yeah. built. Yeah, it's it's I know I've seen a lot of these trucks where the, the rockers are just totally gone. And these they're they're actually there. There's got your typical cab corner rust, but it's uh, surprisingly solid for a rust belt truck. Tells me the thing was probably parked a lot in the winter or it hasn't spent its entire life here in the Midwest. All right, let's get to do something about these tires, get this thing off the trailer and get to working on it. One tire wheel. Oh, oh, oh. That's where we're starting, Aaron. Drop some GM knowledge on us. <laughs> I think you said when you went over and looked at it, you did determine that the engine was not stuck. Yep. So let's take a peek here. Aaron seems to think this is going to run on the quadrajet that's already been sitting on it for 19 years. I think so. It's... He says it's awfully clean, but that don't tell shit about what's inside it. <laughs> let's remove some of the mud. You know. Yeah, look how filthy this windshield is. <laughs> it's sitting in the backyard underneath trees right next to a little creek that was running through the guy's yard. That makes it doubly amazing that it's not more rusty than it is. I know. Sitting there for damn near 20 me. years. That's how good those hood hinges are. Yeah, it doesn't look like the hood's trees, buckled either. Yeah, it's not buckled and the hinges move quite freely. But, can I? I had this engine, yeah, as you can see. Yeah, she's not stuck. And then it's got factory AC on her. We won't need that. She's she's a peach. Hopefully she has heat going <laughs> for the trip this winter. 
One of the great things about this, when we went to go pick it up, everything went wrong. Flat tires, dead winches, dead batteries. The only thing that went right is none of the brakes were stuck. And I'll gladly take that. Well, you can see, the filter's still there. Mouse, Mouse tried condo. to invade it. But, the carburetor, surprisingly, it doesn't look half bad and yeah, it's on the outside. <laughs> it's not stuck. Yeah, another big issue is that being this is a 74, it's got points on it. Which doesn't quite make sense to me. Yeah, I don't know GMs, but I was thinking it from the point of view of me. I don't get along with diesels, hollies, or points. How's the oil look? Black. But it's there. But it's there and There's it's that full. There's a little bit of crap on the bottom of it. That hit the... Is that water? Or? No. Is that like a... Oh, no. It hit the steering shaft on the way out. So. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. Okay. <laughs> Denial is not just a river in England, you know. This is kind of nice. Somebody converted this over to top post battery cables. Obviously, being a Ford guy, I don't have diddly shit around here for GM well, parts. Let's see if there's. But, uh, this will be interesting to see if there's anything in there or not. Do you see anything in there? I don't see anything. Not with this, anyway. There's there's it's, antifreeze okay. in there. Yeah, I'm just. You can't okay, pick it up. I can see it with my eyes. I don't know if my phone's picking it up. Oh, probably. It is in there down a few inches. It's already doing something. I can hear the heater blower motor. Spinning. I assume that's what it is. Yeah. Hey! That sounds terrible. <laughs> Gonna unhook the fuel line going into the carburetor. In case it does start off, it doesn't actually start pumping nastiness from the gas tank into the carburetor on the off chance that the carburetor does want to work place your bets I don't think it will probably not with that points trying to bend that up out of the way I hope I'm wrong but well, I hope you are too I just can't imagine a carburetor no matter how good it looks on the outside <laughs> you're sitting for damn near 20 years is going to be <laughs> pop right off well, should we see Hopefully it'll film? run in some form. Yeah, let's see if she'll at least crank, and then we'll right. investigate whether it has spark or not. Crank attempt number one. Hit it, maestro. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> not even a click. Yeah, this ground one, there ain't much holding. Yeah, it's the, it's the cable. All right, we can strip that off and redo it. Went to strip the insulation off and that thing is just full of corrosion and it feels like it goes to, I don't know, a good foot anyway, before the cable actually gets flexible. I'll just see if I got something else around here instead of messing with that nastiness. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take the other end off. Here. Attempt number two, a new ground cable on there. Well, not new, but better anyway. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, no funny nasty screeching noises or anything. Well, that's a sure tell sign of hope. Put the spark do bobber on her. It doesn't really snap on, it just kinda fits in there. I can just hold on to it, see if it zaps me. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Not surprisingly. <laughs> Back in my day, when I was tough truck racing, you could always predict some some guy would show up with some old rusty Chevy that they dug out of the backyard and over the very first jump it would always die. Can you tell me why? <laughs> because it had a quadrajet on it? No, it was the uh, 
<laughs> the rear mounted distributor. Oh. The cab would shift, hit, hit the, the distributor cap, and yeah, was, every time, like I said, a new guy would always run into that. <laughs> that sounds about but right. don't look terrible for. No. So there's uh, some sort of inspection cover that was missing off it, but it's it's not as rusty in there as I thought it'd look. Maybe I'll pull that rotor off. Should I go ahead and get some emery cloth? Yeah, I think so. Come on, get in there. <laughs> You're graceful like a cat. Yeah, I feel graceful. Pretty pathetic. Really good, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, you're in the way. I can't film. I almost dropped your file too. That would have been. That's lovely. okay. The People's Republic of China will make more. Trying. He's trying to get in there and file the contacts on the points. It's not really going my way. Yeah, this is. We should check and see if there's power even to the yeah the coil. The coil. Maybe we ought to do that. Okay, that seems kind of logical. I don't know if I got the right terminal here, but uh, go ahead. He's on. And there, I got it hot on this one. Yep, hot on both sides. So if we got this figured out right, I got a wire here running from the ground to the battery. I'm going to ground out that terminal on the coil, because that's the one that goes to the points, and when I ground it out, it should throw a spark out of there. So you want to hold the plug wire, or? I don't care. <laughs> no, not really. Because <laughs> if there's a crack in it. <laughs> You'll let me know if there's spark. At least we'll eliminate the coil as being a possibility. Alright. Don't break that. Up. Trying to find something metal to. A card won't work. I suppose. Are we ready? Yeah. Oop. Did yep. I see one? Yep. Okay. Yep. There. Coil's good, so yep. Right, is it? I wouldn't think so. I don't know diddly about GMs, but I don't think that should be slopping around like that. It's just the one side moving, isn't it? Doubt it. <laughs> Points never work that easy, do they? You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Nope. Yep, what? I said nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to hear yep. <laughs> That's not what it was. <laughs> that rotor's still pointing the other way. Yep, right about where we was getting before. Alright. Well, we decided that we were going with HEI. Now. Yeah, even if we got the points running, which we weren't having any luck with anyway, but even if we would have got it running, we were not going to make the trip with points. So we went and found a used HEI from a friend a few miles from my place. Ran to town, got new some new spark plug wires and a cap. Um, now, in the process of uh, taking this one out, we're finding that it's not lining up like it should. Uh, it should be at the top of its compression stroke right now if, if we've got this correct and it's yeah I'm not a GM guy but what, from what Aaron's telling me the rotor there should be pointed towards the number one cylinder over here and it's definitely not funny thing is we were told or Aaron was told anyway that the truck was driven in and parked but there's always the possibility somebody messed with the truck while it was parked there because there is another distributor that was inside the truck but you know what in the end it doesn't matter because we're still going to put the HEI distributor in it anyway now that the distributor's out in the open I wanted to show you why we decided we didn't want to fuck with it anymore 
the contact points, I don't know if you can see them, they're kind of buried in there. We could not get a file or sandpaper or anything in there to save our lives. And we could have pulled the points out and cleaned them that way, but then to get them properly gapped, you still have to be able to get a feeler gauge or something in there, which, like I said before, it was damn near impossible with that condenser in the way right there. So at that point, we decided to just pull the plug on the whole points idea because it was going to be a no-go from the beginning anyway. So tell us, what's the trick to getting a GM distributor in? When the Ford rotor drops in because of the cut of the gears, the rotor will move over a certain amount. Is that the same way with the GM? Yeah, it's essentially exactly the same way. The biggest thing is sometimes the oil pump gear drive isn't lined up quite right. So when you're trying to get that, it might not fall directly in and sometimes yeah. you have to spin the motor a little bit to get those things to line up right and then they'll just fall right in. But won't spinning the motor throw things out of whack for the timing? Or is your gear already engaged by then? Your gear's already engaged. Okay. So you're just lining up the pump at that point. All right. So, that ain't quite right. Didn't take it far enough. No. So, I need to bring it up. Move it back. So, shit. You're right in there somewhere. It feels like the gear is engaged, but like I said, the pump isn't quite in. So, you need me to hold down on that while you crank it? Or um, will it just kind of fall in place? It should kind of just fall into place, so we'll see. Because that seems to be about the right spot. I'll just go ahead and hold down on the distributor body just a little bit. Okay. You can kind of tell me if it just kind of just falls in. Okay, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Yep, it fell in. Perfect. Could be. I'll just have to... Or a vac? No, I guess it's vacuum. There's it's no coolant vacuum. there. That's. I wonder if it has something to do with the transmission. Kind of runs down there. But we'll deal with that later. Yeah, that's one. Okay, from what Aaron tells me, this wire that originally fed the points distributor, it might have a resistor built into it. Is that a big old dead spider hanging there? Ooh, it is. That's pretty impressive. I bet it's crunchy. Wolf spire. Yeah, and big bastard. <laughs> but anyway, not to get off topic here. We're easily amused here, apparently. <laughs> that wire might have a resistor in it, so we, and if it does, we have to cut it back till we get away from it. Yes. So we need a full 12 let's volts. Let's find out if it does or not. Here, you okay. read the meter. Or I'll take the okay. camera. And there. There, I should have it. Yep, we got 12.46. So right. it tells us that it's getting. I won't have to take a resistor out. It's already getting the full voltage. So. You're a class meter. act. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just start over. Okay, so the wire that we just uh, tested for voltage. Had to add a few inches to it, and there's one terminal underneath here you can't see, but it's labeled battery on top, and that's the only wire you need to hook up on these, apparently. I did one of these years ago on a 460, and yeah, that's all I had to do was run that, but I didn't care for the HI distributor because it was so damn big, it gave me very little room to rotate it for timing before it would run into the water pump housing. Or sorry, not water pump, but thermostat. But anyway, AA around here is going to throw these new plug wires on, then maybe we'll get some spark. Yeah. All right, HEI's in, all wired up, we believe. Timing's probably not right, but there's no fuel anyway. So, let's see if we got spark. Go ahead, maestro. I'm not seeing any. Try it again. No? Oh, damn. Well, more investigating. So we were brainstorming here on what was wrong, getting ready to try something. 
And Aaron excitedly, I know what was wrong, and he almost scared me when he did it. But yeah, we never plugged the distributor in. <laughs> we had the power wire in, but there's another. It's for well, now what does that plug go to? Because I was asking you about that before. It goes to the base of the. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I was puzzled while why what you answered me something about the control of the advance and stuff. Uh -huh. And of course, I can't. It just plugs back into itself. Yeah. Can you reach up in there and get that? All right, All right one more try. Go ahead. <laughs> yep, we got spark now. <laughs> yeah. Hooray, <laughs> Hooray for dummies. <laughs> Camera's rolling. All right. Go ahead. Timing? Timing. Which Start way do you think? Recorded a little. Uh, which way is that on these? Uh, turn it towards the passenger side. Maximum advance goes passenger way. You mean the back side of the distributor goes? Clockwise. All right. Ready? Yep. I think we lost a little, didn't we? Right, right there. All right, you ready? Yep. Hmm. Maybe that's not strong enough. It wants to, but it doesn't. It's not backfiring. So, no, not so a bit. It's telling me we're probably pretty close. Let's try a little gas, maybe. Give it a little more potent. Should I try to fill the float bowl? You can try. Is yeah. it this one here? Should be that first vent there, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got two new fire extinguishers a couple weeks ago. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get to try them out. <laughs> you ready? It's ready. For. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> what more? It's alive <laughs> from its grave. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to mess with the timing anymore? Or just leave. I it think leave it there for now. It sounds pretty decent. Yeah. We can mess with it later on. I just want to. Oh, damn! How much this float will hold? Look at it. It's pretty big. I don't know if it was just a leak or if I was just shit I've spilled, spilled all over. Okay, go ahead. It had to have been running on what was in the fuel bowl. Mm -hmm. Nothing out of the fuel line yet. Nope. I'd say that. No smoke out of the exhaust, yeah, nothing funny. A little blue, but I think from sitting for so long, you're gonna have. Probably don't need this on here anymore.
like a vacuum line might run to the transmission. Did you shut it off or did it die? It died. The, uh, the oil pressure gauge is leaking under the dash. Oh, is that what that line is running in there? Yeah. Do we want to just unhook it and pinch it off or what? I don't feel long. There. That was a booger. <gasps> Gonna do a little gravity feed here. Gotta admit, I was surprised it actually idled. I know. It idled really well, actually. You, you had faith in that quadrajet and I didn't. See? You just gotta have a little faith. So we start singing, what is that? Faith by George Michael. Yeah, Michaels. George Michael or Wham or whatever it was yeah. at that point. Or should we just shut up and get back to work? You should just probably get back to work. Surely hear lifters clattering by now if it didn't have oil pressure. Fuel. Yeah, it could be that fuel pump ain't working. Yeah, it might be just running out because it's the gravity feed can't keep up with it. When you put the fuel line up, it ran clear through the pump and all the way up to the carburetor. So it might just still be gravity feeding through the fuel pump. Keeps running out of fuel. One way to find out for sure, unhook the fuel line. Yeah. This wouldn't have to unhook it completely, just see if it starts spraying. I'll crank it. Okay, have fun. Start blowing fuel out. So you think the pump's working then? Yeah, it acts like it might be working. I don't know why I keep that much. It's weird that it just keeps filling up though. <laughs> yeah, just, I would think it wouldn't just gravity feed through the pump. <laughs> it shouldn't. Well, in order to try to get the thing to stay running longer, we pulled the fuel filter from out of the carburetor. I haven't tried it yet. But now we're debating on whether to try to actually make it move. There's obviously no brakes. Uh, we did put some fluid in it and try to pump it. Started pulling down the fluid in the rear reservoir, but still didn't make any difference. But uh, 
I let's see if we go backwards. <laughs> I guess there's less valuable shit to hit out there than there is to run into your truck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you could miss everything out there and Just turn and go north, then it eventually goes downhill to where you'd stop. So let's try. it's up to you. I mean, going forward, the only way you're going to get through is right through there. See if she'll move. See if we even stay running now. No, I have nothing. Won't even crank? be which way again? Uh, turn the vacuum advance towards the front. Counterclockwise. All right, turn that. that's off that's right above where the fuel filter was. Oh, back <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> you want me to retard it again? seems to be stuck it's indicating that it's in low range but it could be in neutral what was there for fluid in there There's a little bit on the stick not a lot it back a little bit. Let me advance it again. <laughs> no. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Getting cold out here. It is getting cold. Well, we didn't show it, but it wouldn't move, and we checked the transmission fluid, and there was nothing showing on the dipstick. So we run into town, and got some transmission fluid. He's put a gallon in so far. Apparently, taking the filter out of the input of the 
carburetor has helped with the idle. It stays running now. Not too shabby. It moves! Did you see that? It moved! Did you see that? I saw it! I can't believe it! That's a wrap, folks! Come on! Bum. I, don't, I don't know why we bothered putting the hood down. You can't see out of that windshield anyway with the moss all over it. I'm trying to see if it'll warm up a little. Right. Let it warmed up a little. Put another cord in it. See if she's a little happier about life now. Bit. Got a little bit of break. Really? Well, now that it's moved a little, can we get the shifter? Oh, maybe. maybe it was just in a bind. Gotcha. Seems to be stuck in four low or low lock. I'm gonna start it up again. And... Put it in neutral, maybe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Spewing her guts in here. Um. Yeah, oh Jesus! What? Yeah, look how much it's leaking. Oh, it's running out the door. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, it's. Oh my God! Look at it. Look what it's done. <laughs> oh, that's just where you drove through it. I was like, how's it getting sprayed on the tire? Um. Yeah, we should probably unhook that. Yeah. That could be an issue. Well, we slowed it down at least. We got it outside the jam. Yeah, apparently it does have a little bit of brakes. <laughs> Assuming that's a uh brake shoe dragging or brake pad or
that's not dust that's actually the uh, supposedly repaired brake line that we did it's actually dripping that oil right on the exhaust manifold right now so that makes for a little extra fun of the smoke show Even got tail lights. I don't know if you can see it, but she's smoking like a sniff now. Yeah, it looked like a cloud of dust up there, but I I narrated that it indeed was not dust. It was <laughs> oil burning off the exhaust manifold. But Am's you happy? I was, but definitely no brakes. You was happy, but you're not now. I'm happy, but I'm. I'd say it went pretty well today. I, it did. Other than it took a lot of time. But. Yeah. But when something sits for that long too, you know. <laughs> yeah, you see, see the smoke rolling there off the exhaust manifold. And oil coming off the cab. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next for the game plan? Um, I think I can make a list of parts. I have one kind of started. So we're going to carry through then. I think so. We're pretty happy with the engine, obviously, and the yeah. transmission seems to be working. I think, uh, well, we definitely need to kind of, we need to bust loose the shifter linkage. Well, were we going to change the transfer case? If time allows. But we got, at this point, we got six weeks, exactly. So. So that seems like plenty of time, but you know how life gets in the way of everything. Yeah. And things never go as smooth as you think they will. Yeah, we kind of really want to get rid of that 203. It's just a big, heavy lump of shit down underneath yeah, there. It really is. But I think we can push forward with getting brakes and probably just go ahead and get a whole new vacuum booster and master. Well, I don't know. The vacuum booster seemed like it was working. I mean, it was idling down when I pushed on the brake, so it was like it was pulling vacuum. Cooling system doesn't seem to be leaking. No. Making pressure? Yep. Excellent. So, we've got... And then we'll... We're not sure what yet we're going to do about the fuel tank. We might just drop it out of there and take a look inside it. Yeah. Or we might pour a few gallons in and see what comes out and how it looks. Hard saying with them. I just... Yeah, I mean, as long as this thing sat, it was amazing to me that there was still exhaust on it because it was sunk down in the ground pretty damn good. Usually the exhaust would be just rotten and gone, but it's actually still there. It's got dual glass packs on it. It doesn't sound horrible. No. It's not like too loud, but it's not, you know, it's not too quiet. It doesn't have that blat, blat, blat sound that <laughs> I've heard on Chevys before. It potato, sounds potato, potato. awful. <laughs> So we're going to carry on with this project. So uh, we got six weeks. She's running and moving now. So that's the, the big part. We're over the big hurdle. Or so we think. <laughs> it's, a, it's a viable candidate at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. It runs and it moves poorly, but it does do it. We are going to press on with the plan to try to get this truck ready for the 900 mile round trip to pick up my second Mercury Comet and go to the swap meet in the process, just like we did last winter. So yeah, keep your eye out for the next video of getting the truck ready, see what kind of surprises we find trying to get it ready. Thanks for watching.